Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome, I'm Jonathan, the appliance dude, otherwise known as Senor Smoke, here at Curdo's in Westchester County. A happy new year to everybody. This is the first video blog post of 2017, and we are getting out of the gates at full speed. Why? Because I'm going to talk about my favorite product in the entire store, okay? And we're going to talk about that in relation to what I cooked yesterday about it, on it, the way I cooked it, okay? And we're also going to use the segue into it is based upon a question that I've been asked somewhat often. And that question is, Jonathan, if you could only pick one grill, which grill would it be to own, okay? <sighs> Breath. The answer to that question is very simple. It is a Memphis wood-fired pellet grill. And while some of you out there might be saying to yourself, what are you talking about? You're the same guy who has done 30 to 40 alfresco videos. How could you pick this? What is a Memphis grill? How could you pick it over the alfresco and all the craziness to do with that grill? It's really simple. The alfresco is the best of the gas premium grills. And I speak with experience on that. I love that grill. I love it so much that I've actually given a name, Big Iron, okay? Um, I have a great relationship with that grill. It kicks ass. But the question that has been posed to me was not what is the best of the gas grills. The question is if you could only own one grill. And when you look at it that way, it's undoubtedly a Memphis because you can do anything with a Memphis grill other than rotisserie. Um, this week, what I did was I, I smoked a prime rib for the first time. And the way I did it was uh, something, a technique that I've avoided in the past because I had been burnt, no pun intended. I've overcooked things with it, and that's the reverse sear method. I am now a subscriber, a follower, a devotee of reverse searing big hunks of meat. This is definitely the way you have to go. So let's get into how it was accomplished on this amazing, amazing Memphis scroll. I had a seven pound, two bone in uh, prime rib, prime cut, got it down on Arthur Avenue. The preparation was very, very simple. Rubbed it down with extra virgin olive oil, hit it with the Jacobson sea salt, which is the best salt I've ever tasted. Cracked black pepper, done. I let it sit in the fridge for a little while, let that dry atmosphere kind of dry it out a little bit. Um, you know, so it was kind of like a little bit of a brine action without doing it overnight. And um, I set the Memphis up to be for indirect smoking, indirect rolling, 250 degrees. It was a three hour cook, put the prime rib right in there on the grate, nothing underneath it. And I put in a tray of beef broth, which is going to be smoked and turned into a smoked juice, okay? Uh, so three hours later, I had this beautiful hunk of meat staring at me in the face, took it out and let it relax for what was supposed to be a half an hour, ended up being an hour because we were trying to um, kind of schedule this along with the other dishes that my wife was, uh, was serving. And um, I took it back onto the grill. Now here's, what, here's where the reverse sear comes in. I turned the grill up to 400 degrees. Now you know the Memphis grill can go up to 700 degrees, but I did it at 400, it was hot enough, and I did not need to take the direct uh, flame insert uh, I put it into the grill. That's what I thought I was going to do. That's why the Memphis is very different than most other pellet grills is that you actually have the ability to put in a different cooking plate which has holes punched in it and allows you to get direct flame. I thought that's what I was going to have to do. I did not because the grill was, was hot enough at 400 degrees with the indirect in there. I put the big hunk of roast in there and we seared it for about 10 minutes. Moved it from side to side, side to side, and then I pulled it off, and at that point, bang, it's ready to cut. You don't need to let the meat relax and temp for half an hour, because you did that already. And oh, man. I mean, when this was cut, we're talking medium rare, edge to edge, and that's what the reverse sear will do for you. It gives you that edge to edge love that is very, very challenging to do if you seared it and then, and then smoked or grilled it. Um, and uh, I, I mean, little as the guy who likes things medium rare, it was 130 degrees when we pulled it off. Uh, everybody was just going nuts over it because, again, you had this incredible crusty char on the outside 
coupled with, as Steve Reichlin likes to say, the sanguine interior. I mean, just pink, juicy, luscious. We used, uh, what else can I tell you about the smoke? We'd used oak uh, pellets. I didn't want something that was overly, overly over the top in terms of the smoke flavor. That's why we avoided mesquite, maple, etc. Oak was fantastic. And um, the reverse sear, it's a, little, it's a little challenging because there is the chance that you could overcook the meat. It's happened to me on numerous occasions before. Um, but again, 10 minutes. Steve Reichlin's recipe actually said to do it for 15. Um, I cut it down by five minutes and did it for 10. And as I said before, when I cut into that piece of beef, it literally, the knife just glided in. It was unbelievable, an otherworldly experience that I could only wish upon my fellow grillers and smokers. Anybody has any questions about the Memphis, please, or even if you have questions about the way that I cooked this prime rib, so I'm getting a lot of those, uh, jonathanacurtos.com. Come visit the showroom. It's all good. We're here to help. We're going to have a big year, a lot of grilling, a lot of smoking, and I'm back to a lot of appliance videos as well. Um, thank you very much. Happy New Year again.